Some of you have gotten a few thunderstorms this evening moving across the area thanks to a cold front dropping southeast across uh, our area. And we've seen a couple of those stronger thunderstorms this evening. But now that we're lost a lot of the heating of the day, things have really calmed down pretty nicely out there. So we do still have a few spotty showers working their way through the mountains right now. No severe weather currently uh, and currently no lightning associated with these thunderstorms as well. And they're falling apart, really fizzling out the further down to the southeast they drop, but they're moving pretty Pretty quickly down to the southeast right now. So as we put future cast into motion, you're going to notice over the next couple of hours, this really does fizzle out. About one o'clock, we may see a few isolated showers and pickings in Oconee County, and then dropping down in towards Greenville. So a little bit of light rain possible over the uh, into the early hours of your Monday. But overall, this shouldn't really impact anyone, uh, especially since most of you are asleep. But even if you are going to be out and about into the early hours of tomorrow, we're just talking about some pretty light rain out there. And by the time you wake up tomorrow morning around 7 a.m. Things are pretty much out of here and we're looking at just a partly cloudy sky. The possibility though of some patchy fog up into the mountains tomorrow morning as you wake up to those temperatures in the low to mid 50s. We're talking upper 50s to the low 60s up across the upstate and into northeast Georgia. So uh, temperatures pretty similar to what you woke up to this morning. Then tomorrow afternoon, a beautiful pleasant day with a lot of sunshine on the way for us. We're going to see afternoon highs in the 80s across the upstate and northeast Georgia with 82 in Union down to Lauren and into Greenwood. Spartanburg, Greenville checking in at 80 degrees as well as into Clemson with 78 and Forest City there. And then we've got those lower 70s as you get into those higher elevations up into the mountains tomorrow afternoon. Now it's going to be one of the warmer days though that we see the rest of the week because our temperatures are going to drop off. So by Tuesday, we're just a couple of degrees cooler. We're talking those uh, 70s area wide. And then by Wednesday, the mountains getting into the 60s with low 70s into the upstate and area wide highs are going to be in the 60s for Thursday and Friday with a dry cold front coming through during the middle part of the week, knocking those highs back as well. It does look like we're going to rebound by the time we get into the weekend, but overall the middle part of the week is going to be on the cooler side but dry until we get to the later part of Thursday. And that's when we're going to start to talk about the potential impacts from the tropics here. So it's been a very active pattern for us. We're starting to lose some of these tropical systems, though. Fiona, no longer an issue. Hermine and Gaston, the latest, uh, the last update was just issued here at 11 o'clock. That is now a post-tropical system. I'm not expected to impact land at this point, but we are going to watch this area for potential development about a 30% chance that that could develop in the next five days. But of course, the big thing that all of us are going to be talking about for the rest of this week is what's happening with Tropical Storm Ian. It is currently about 160 miles to the south of Grand Cayman. Uh, we haven't gotten the 11 o'clock update yet, but it is 60 mile per hour winds as of 8 o'clock. The hurricane hunters have been out investigating it throughout the day today, uh, gathering all of that data to help fine tune this forecast and it's had towards the Grand Ca or the Cayman Islands as well as western parts of Cuba as a uh, rapidly intensifying hurricane and then eventually possibly becoming a major category for hurricane into the Gulf of Mexico as we head into Wednesday and then it takes aim at the Gulf Coast of Florida. Now we're looking at anywhere from south of Tampa into the panhandle of Florida for a potential landfall but keep in mind the cone is just tracking where the potential center is. That doesn't include the impacts. The impacts could be felt outside of the center of uh, outside of this cone. And yes, we do have parts of the upstate and northeast Georgia into that cone of uncertainty as we head into the day on Friday. So we've already issued that first alert for Friday. We do think at a minimum we're likely going to see some rain out of this. Uh, the question is just exactly how bad is it going to be? And at this point, it's too early to fine tune those details. We need more information on where this is going to be headed, how it interacts with Cuba in terms of its intensity. Does that drop things off? And whether it's on the western or eastern side of the forecast trend here. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that as we head throughout the rest of the week. We do have some time to kind of hurry up and wait for this.